morning. Um, I was asked to write a sentence about myself to give to Natalie, which I forgot to do. Anyway, <laughs> David Johnson was brought into this world naturally and has ended up as a poet. It goes to show you never can tell. Now, uh, nature, I mean, we, we tend to think of it as Bill Odeon's Spring Watch or David Attenborough, the hushed voice looking at um, gorillas or something. But to my mind, nature is everywhere. It's in the cracks of outer walls. It's in between the joints of crazy paving, shrugging through the tarmac surface of a minor country road, poking out of chimney stacks at the local railway station, in the mice that scrump the crumbs that fall from kitchen tables. Nature is everywhere, in the falcon perched on top of four square office blocks, in the gulls that dive the walkers as they snatch the chips from grazers' hands. Nature is everywhere. It's in the microbes that we breathe. It's in the mold that grows on grouting. It's in the slugs that eat our seedlings. Nature is everywhere. Thank you. I mean, a lot of our uh, contact with nature is quite often, uh, I guess, through gardening, that sort of thing, I'm, if we're lucky enough to have a garden. Um, and I was thinking the other day what it is to be a gardener. It is the thrill at the sight of jostling jonquils, sharing a bed with leaf-stripped epimedium. It is to wake up in the middle of the night, racked by fear that lily beetles are eating your fritillaries and then to traipse downstairs to grab a torch to seek them out in the night damp grass that wicks up the cuffs of your flannelette pyjama bottom. It is to marvel at the diversity in size, colour, shape of the tulips in your small patch of earth. It is to agonise over the fate of trees that still stand despite age and rot. It is to relax on a wooden bench in the sun, surrounded by trailing vines, breathing in the scent of roses, enjoying that moment of ease until the next weed or seed calls you to action. So. Uh, in the early 1950s, when they were planning how to do away with um, the poor housing in, uh, in Bedminster, uh, the big plans were sort of garden suburb at Hartcliffe and, and Withywood. And, um, and if you go there today, um, it's still got, it still has all the benefits of the garden city. Unfortunately, it's got a rather poor reputation. But Hartcliffe, the hills behind Hartcliffe are as green as hills anywhere. Its tree-lined streets are as broad as any Clifton Avenue. The bastard service tree by the gatehouse centre is as perfect as any in Eden. The sky is as blue. The view is as wide from the top of a block in Hartcliffe as anywhere. The people are as warm, the family is as close, their feelings as deep and intense as anywhere. Want a job, want a friend, want true love, want some money. Hartcliffe has dreams as sweet and as sour as anywhere, but Hartcliffe is not anywhere. I, I don't watch a lot of these um, sort of reality TV programs, but every now and then I catch sight of one which appears to rip a perfectly happy family from its urban setting and drops them in the middle of a. Uh, what looks like, to me like a slightly unpromising uh, rural um, situation and usually there's one person in the family that's a lot keener than the rest on them and I'm I've written this poem from the point of view of that uh, that person I've dug my potatoes I've set off my rocket I've coiled my straight hose I've oiled the sprocket on my wind-powered mower I spread my own dung, I've composted my pants, my praises are sung from Whitehaven to Hans as an organic grower of green veggie delights. My footprint, it's minor, I love insects and mites, I find nothing is finer than mud on my carrots, my carpet, my linen, my wife, my parrots, 
my lino, my children in each nook and cranny, mud on the sofa, the bed, and on granny. In fact, all that is left is mud for me. The rest couldn't hack it, they quit the country. Uh, of course, we, we all, we, we love nature and uh, aspects of nature, but of course sometimes we bump up against it, or should we say, yes, I suppose we are probably in encroaching on nature. I remember the first time that I saw a fox in the middle of Redland, Bristol, late at night, his eyes bright beads of nighttime bijouterie flashing in the sodium glare. I remember the first time I saw fox prints etched in the lawn, smooth pre-dawn snow, and that millisecond flash of russet brush winking in and out of the privet. In recent years, the visits have increased. Daylight forays around road, along roads and in gardens, sniffing the bins at the local cop shop, keen to dine on criminal waste. The fox's beauty still captures my eye, but its manner is now almost brazen. A visiting friend delights in the sight, and we delight in revealing our Reynard crossing the grass and leaping up onto our handcrafted English oak table. Oh, how lovely! Oh, how cute! Oh, how sweet! Ugh, you brute! That's revolting, disgusting! He's peeing all over the fine-grained surface of our oak table. He's marking his claim to the territory. My territory! Our territory! Not his! Get off! Get down! Shove off! Pee off! He leaps to the ground and runs through the shed where later I tread in his droppings. Oh, nature is wondrous. Nature is poo. Later that week, in the twilight gloom, I open the back gates onto the road to be met by the stare of the fox standing in safety in our neighbour's front yard. I could tell in an instant just what he was thinking. Oh, cheers, mate. Thanks for unlocking the doors to my dunny. From rarity to lavatory, from marvel to disgust, how fickle are my feelings? I love nature on the telly, nature in the press, nature captured vividly by digital eyes, but don't let it bite me, sting me or fight me. Don't let it mess where I might be eating. Keep it on the pages of the National Geographic. Send Bear grills to wrestle with the crops, but keep me from that awful peeing urban fox. <laughs> How long have I be going on for? Uh, ages. Got two minutes left. Two minutes, oh right. Well, um, the, uh, just as some animals are sort of slightly less um, written about than others, so some vegetables are slightly less written about than others. And uh, I feel the parsnip is certainly under-poetized. I mean, it's a, it's a very nice root vegetable. Pastinaca sativa, proud member of the parsley clan precursor of potatoes as a source of starch for man. Pastinaca, sativa, albino carrot, perfect treat, the goldy horn of root crops, both nutty and sweet. Pastinaca, sativa, to mash, to roast, to boil. Now you are a gourmet crisp, hand-cooked in virgin oil. Pastinaca, sativa, au gratin, or in soup. You're the acme of perfection of the APAC group. Thank you very much. My dream has always been to own a ride-on mower. But the size of my lawn means this dream is not a goer. I dream of tuning up its engine, ramping up its speed, sharpening its rotor blades, destroying every weed, painting on the logo of Ferrari's prancing steed. But in truth, a pair of scissors is all I really need. Thank you.